Hello and uh, welcome back to the NHL Best Bets. Yesterday there were only two games um, and um, we made a pick in both games. Um, here you can see the results. Um, Boston visited New York Rangers. Um, the game was pretty even and um, only with uh, six players um, after two Karask uh, skated first time to the box um, Boston scored 2-2 uh, equalizer in um, last minute of the game and uh, then uh, it was um, only I think half a minute in overtime when, when Boston scored um, the winner but um, with the uh, Rangers uh, plus 141 uh, basically even a game um, and then in coin flip, um, like we used to already have uh, in so many times, um, we lose the pick. Uh, I think the bet was um, reasonably okay. Then um, Toronto, Montreal, um, heavyweight fight in Canada. Toronto dominated, um, especially the later part of the game, and um, pulled the 4 2 victory there. Um, and that. Um, brought our balance to the profit yesterday with um, two dollars or two units um, how much you have been betting um, Tommy what's your take uh, from these uh, games yeah I get to say again about the shootouts and the overtimes that we're not we can't seem to hit those in target so very close game uh, in New York um, also, um, the shots were quite even, uh, so could have gone either way. So we, we got a good value there for the Rangers. So um, I would make that bet again anytime. So very close, very close overall. Uh, good goaltending from both teams. And of course, then in the end, Boston prevailed a little bit better team. So it tends to go this way when it goes over time or the shootouts that the favorite is then uh, a little bit stronger in these, statistically speaking, at least. So um, a bit of a Bad, bad stretch for us in these games, but let's see how we do in the future. Um, then taking a look at Montreal-Toronto game, it was uh, pretty much as predicted. Toronto, again, very bad start to the game. Uh, they were outplayed in the beginning, but then kind of got their game going by the end of the game and then then won by a uh, 2-4 to four score. Uh, good win for Toronto, nice value for us, so we made that small profit, but it's always better to make the plus 2 than minus 200. So. Um, a good good one there, and uh, of course there was also uh, interesting line movements um, of the odds before the game. Toronto started as favorites, then they turned into underdogs, and I think just before the game, uh, even the we got even better odds than that plus 102. So always worth uh, keeping an eye on the odds, uh, no matter what the what the predictions are. So uh, keep an eye out not to make any any stupid bets after the the changes in the lines. Uh, how about um, totals um, in our simulations? Um, I think uh, uh, this first game, uh, Boston New York, was under, but um, did we uh, pick those correct um, by our machine? Yeah, in the in the first game, the Rangers Boston, our prediction machine uh, predicted five goals, and the line was five point five. So uh, we got a good profit there of plus uh, one hundred and four for the under. Um, the other game, Montreal-Toronto, we predicted six goals, and it was six goals. So uh, no bets, no profits, no losses there. So no, no. Uh, um, but very good, uh, very good night in regarding all the bets. So we got a nice profit from the uh, plus odds for the Toronto, um, and then the uh, the over under in the Rangers game. So despite Rangers losing that one, got a nice profit there. That's always better than um, losing both games um, in overtime or shootout um, and um, especially going over with the um, last minute um, equalizer when you are playing without a goalie. So I think there should be some kind of um, a rule change that uh, you cannot take goalie away in the last <laughs> minute, uh, even though Tulka Rask was trying to do that uh, twice in the uh, game between uh, Boston and, and uh, Rangers, but uh, it's um, of course um, interesting um, when you have not goal and uh, especially when you are betting totals 
and your uh, current setup is under and then it could go over either to the empty net or as an equalizer by the uh, team that is um, one goal behind. Yeah, that's why you cash out before the, uh, the end of the game if you can. <laughs> that's true. Um, today there's a bit more games um, in the schedule. Uh, we have selected two games here and um, first one, uh, Carolina goes to Dallas. Dallas hasn't played um, extremely well, if we think uh, that was the team in Stanley Cup uh, half a year ago. Um, they lost actually two games um, at home against uh, Chicago, 1-2 in overtime, both games, same results. But now they are bound to bounce back uh, from those losses and uh, facing Carolina, getting good 114 plus odds um, in the game. Then uh, another game, uh, Columbus goes to Chicago. Um, they have, um, let's say, expectation is that there is a goaltending clinic coming tonight. Uh, Columbus will play Jonas Korpisalo, has been playing very well, solid goaltending um, night after night. But uh, rookie sensation uh, in Chicago, Kevin Lankin, has been maybe even better. He has um, been a um, key player in Chicago's good performance. And when these two teams are facing each other, they are not any kind of uh, offensive machines like um, Edmonton or Toronto, but they base their game on defense. And uh, with two extremely good goaltending with hot hands, uh, our pick is under five and a half goals in this game. Yeah, both really good picks. Like, uh, like we mentioned, Dallas faced uh, Columbus. Uh, recently so i mean chicago so that was a low scoring game so both kind of feeding to each other here dallas now at home uh, against carolina carolina team maybe a little bit underperformed um, considering that they did lose to uh to columbus last time around in that angry john tortorella game um and uh, dallas then has lost now three in a row uh with chicago really tight games one to two um, both games. So now Dallas returning home uh, with these odds again. A very good pick, pick for uh, for Dallas that who are a lot more competitive than they they've shown. So there is a lot of expectation in this game and should be a good matchup between uh, Dallas and Carolina for the for the home team here. Also Carolina's goaltending situation a little bit questionable. Peter Mrazek still out. Uh, James Reimer not certain. So uh, at least last time. Uh, Carolina started Alex Nedjelkovic, who is by no means um, a very um, established NHL keeper. So that plays into Dallas's hands as well. Um, then going to Chicago um, with Columbus, like you said, uh, two Finnish goaltenders, pretty certain to play. Uh, Latvian Elvis has some sort of upper body injury, so he's out. Jonas Korpisalo for Columbus, really defensive team. Like we keep repeating, they're not scoring a lot of goals. Uh, John Tortorella system, very defensive, and Chicago, very like-minded team at the moment. Not a lot of offensive weapons, uh, plays very solid, and of course, then goaltenders. Uh, both actually now, Malcolm Subban, who I mixed with Kevin Langan because he played so well um, last time around. So both goaltenders, whoever is playing for Chicago, have now shown that they are able to keep their their sheets clean. So. Uh, expected very low scoring game and uh, can go either way one two two one maximum three goals per team scored at any point yeah i think these are pretty pretty good selections um, for tonight um, um there is uh, i think overall 10 games um, up and coming any other good values out of those games uh, especially if we think about um, home teams and and especially home underdogs yeah, there is a couple of couple of these uh, very interesting ones. We do have Florida against Tampa Bay, about 50-50 game. Uh, of course, Tampa Bay, they're a massive favorite on the road in, in Sunrise. Uh, but um, this is a very questionable pick because Florida hasn't been performing that well. Of course, Tampa, um, reigning champions, uh, probably a favorite in every game of this season they play. Uh, but also a little bit... Um, 
like we saw last season, that they might not put everything into the regular season. They might hold back a little. So Florida has a chance, but simulations do like them. So if you're looking for a home underdog, Florida in simulations, 50%. The odds are around 42%, so plus 128 for Panthers. So that's something to look into if you're interested in these picks. Um, then we have the heavy favorites, Winnipeg winning uh, against Ottawa in Winnipeg. Uh, no brainer there. Ottawa not a good team. Winnipeg should get um, get some wins as well. Um, same goes with Vegas. Uh, some Corona issues there as well last game, but this game should take place against Anaheim in Vegas. Uh, Vegas massive favorites again, more than 70% in the in the simulations, about 65% by the odds. So um, heavy heavy favorites there. And. Um... Then I think there's some value also in um, some of the visiting teams, um, like um, Edmonton goes to Montreal that played uh, last night against um, Toronto. So it's back-to-back -back game for Montreal, and uh, historically they haven't been any great in, in these home back-to-back -back games uh, when their overall win percentage just at home is... Uh, um, 47.6% during the last three seasons. The home back-to-back -back game win percentage is only 29.4%. So maybe the case has been that Carey Price is played always the first game and then second one somebody else. Uh, um, who is going to start tonight um, in Montreal's goal? So far it's unconfirmed, but Carey Price started yesterday, so it could be Jake Allen tonight. Uh, Jake Allen has played really well this season, so maybe this time Montreal does have the goaltending duo that can keep them competitive in, in every game. Uh, that hasn't been the case maybe in the past. So like you said, Carey Price, top goaltender of the in the in the league, and then the backup has usually been a little bit more shaky. So could be the reason uh, now Jake Allen should be able to keep his team in the game. Still, we do have either or... Uh, Price or Allen, it doesn't matter. We do have Edmonton as favorites. They've been uh, playing quite well, scoring a lot of goals, which is always something the simulations do emphasize. So uh, we do have Edmonton winning about 54% of the simulations, while the odds indicate only about 45 So something to look into. Montreal, of course, our simulations have undermined them most of the season, but now they have seen that they are, they might have been a little bit overperforming in the early season because now they lost to Toronto last night. Uh, they did lose to Ottawa, struggled in the other game against Ottawa. So maybe the Montreal bubble is bursting a little bit at least, and maybe the simulations were right all along. Yeah, uh, it's interesting to see how Edmonton performs. Like you said, they have scored quite a bit during the last games, but uh, on the other hand, um, they have played uh, four games against Ottawa out of five, so they won all of those. Uh, but then uh, previous win, except Ottawa, is from the last month, so um, their bar is maybe not so high when they have been able to score so many goals um, against uh, quite lowly uh, Ottawa team. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point to make because uh, with this sort of schedule now that we're having, uh, these small things might affect a lot, especially in the simulations when you have uh, four or five games in a, in a week or uh, in a row against a lousy opponent that might push the trend a little bit more than in the normal season where you would have a lot more mixed opponents. Uh, that's true, that's true. And... Um... There are some uh, other games, uh, like I said, um, on the road, um, underdog uh, on the bookmakers' uh, books, but uh, favorite in our simulations, uh, Pittsburgh goes to New York Islanders, um, visit, uh, visiting New York Islanders, and uh, um, there Pittsburgh seem to be favorite um, and have some value to bet, but... Uh, Islanders played uh, very well against uh, Rangers a few nights ago, so they may have um, found um, their own uh, game again and uh, be able to improve it. Uh, they won uh, Pittsburgh um, uh, 7th of uh, uh, January, so four days ago, 4-3, so I don't know if um, Pittsburgh is uh, 
ready to take revenge now. Yeah, I think Pittsburgh got back some of their defensemen there, so they have a little bit better lineup this time around. But um, I remember that uh, last time we picked New York Islanders and got it right, and it was due to the fact that Penguins have struggled in New York, uh, especially against Islanders. Um, and now with Barry Trotz, uh, seems to have put Mike Sullivan in his pocket and uh, basically outplayed the Penguins a couple of times in a row. So in here, of course, Penguins now a small underdog by the odds. Um, our simulations indicate about 53% probability for the Penguins to win. So there is a road, road underdog that you can pick, but... Um, Myself, I wouldn't trust Penguins against Islanders at any point because of the history between these two teams. Yeah, you're right. Um, they have played uh, 15 times during the last three seasons and uh, uh, Islanders have won 60% uh, and uh, on the road, uh, on the home, they have uh, won 62.5%. So uh, they have been a better team in this uh, matchup between these two two nowadays uh, divisional teams yeah Barry Trotz likes to uh, likes to match the lines and for example especially when he plays at home you can play the bottom six of uh, Matt Martins and Casey Zizikas and these defensive minded players against the Crosby Genzel and these sort of uh, attacking players so they are able to shut down the the productive units of Penguins and like we've been saying all along the season penguins team not as strong as they used to be so their bottom six is not that great in scoring goals like it was back in the day with phil kessels and uh, and the like playing there so uh, this is something that will definitely play into the hands of uh, islanders and barry trots let's see how this um, first game of uh, tonight goes um, it starts um, um, seven p.m um, eastern time and um, then there is another great night of the games until uh, morning when the um, games in West uh, Calgary visits Vancouver, Anaheim, Vegas and San Jose continues their game uh, in uh, LA against Kings. Yeah, so, it, will be, it will be a very long night for us again. It will, but it's uh, hopefully rewarding uh, when we cash in our boat picks. Definitely. <laughs>